After I finished making my Formula 1 70th anniversary video, I felt compelled to look around for any historical items I could get from that first race as a nice memento for all the months of work I did on it. And so I went along to an auction and I won this, which is an original 1950 official program from that first ever race. Now inside it includes details about the drivers, track information, even lap charts people could fill in while watching the race. But what the auction house failed to mention was that it was also going to include this, which is an official teams booklet, which inside has all the rules and regulations from that first ever race. So we're going to look inside to see what those rules are. One of the key points about the rules and regulations from the 1950 race, effectively what told teams what they can and can't do, is that everything they needed to know was just on three pages. And that goes from your team entry fees, to your technical regulations, even to what the flags meant when driving around the course. And we're also going to look into the money side of things, you know how much it costs to insure a driver, also what the prize money was, and then using an inflation calculator, how much of that would be now in 2020. So let's open it up and have a look. So going on to our first page of the supplementary regulations, we can see here that the entrance will be required to pay a registration and insurance fee of five pounds. So if you wanted to enter in the first ever race, it only costs you a fiver. But of course this was 70 years ago, so nowadays with inflation it would be around about 172 pounds or about $230. So just underneath that, we then got the awards, which details how much prize money was given to the drivers. And crucially, it was just the drivers and not the teams. Now, some of the teams would have worked out a deal with their drivers, you know, get a certain percentage of their prize money so that they can race with, like, you know, the likes of Alpha and Male or whomever. But crucially, in the rules and regulations, only the drivers were given the prize money, not the teams. So if you won the race, you would have got £500, which with inflation works out to £17,262, or in America, be about 23 grand. If you came second, you would have got £300, which works out to around 10,000 Grand. If you came third, you'll get 200, which works out to around six or seven grand, and so on. But more crucially, if you got the fastest lap of the race, you would have got an additional 30 pounds, which works out to 1,035 pounds, or in dollars, it'd be $1,384. But it wasn't just prize money that the drivers were rewarded with. If they completed the race, they would have been given a Royal Automobile Silverstone plaque, which also went to the chief mechanic on the race winning team. But crucially, to qualify, you would have to complete 60 laps out of the 70. So if you're on lap 59 and you see the checkered flag, then unfortunately, you're going home empty handed. On to what I think is one of my favorite sections, which is the technical regulations of the car itself. And as you can see, there's not a lot there, so we'll quickly go through it. So the engine capacity is limited to 1,500 cc if it's supercharged, or if it's not supercharged, it's 4,500 cc. So that's basically it in terms of what you can and can't do with the engine, so make of that what you will. There must be some form of protection between the engine and the driver's seat, suitable and sufficient in case of a fire preventing the passage of flame in the part of the car that is occupied by the driver. So effectively, can you just make sure there's some space so that the driver can get out in time if your engine blows up? Not super safe, but what have you. And each car must have two reflector mirrors. And that's it. That's all the car technically needs to have to be able to compete in the F1 race. I just love that it's just in three lines. That's basically the regulations of the car. <laughs> so next up, let's talk about the drivers. So each car will be allowed one driver and one spare driver, also known as your reserve driver, both of whom must hold a FIA International Competition license. No one may drive more than one car during the race, though the spare driver can be nominated for more than one car. So for example, Alfa Romeo entered in four cars, so the reserve driver could be looking after all four of those drivers if any of them fell ill. However, what they're saying they can't do is let's say that uh, Fangio crashed out during the race, they can't then communicate to uh, Farina to come in so then Fangio can jump into his car and finish the race that way. They weren't allowed to do that back then or when they first started. And this next rule for drivers has really shown how far along we've come in motorsport. That drivers must wear goggles or a visor throughout the race and practice and are advised to wear a crash helmet. Not mandatory, it's advised. Can, can you put one on please? Like, how well was that not a regulation beforehand? Oh dear. But it's 70 years ago, that's that's what it was. So let's now move down to the fuel section, which is actually quite interesting that any type of fuel and refueling apparatus may be used. And crucially, what that means is that if the team creates their own, you know, petrol or oil sort of intake and mixes in some different chemicals with it, absolutely fine to use. So that's quite interesting that obviously later on, it's been a lot more regulated of what fuel you can and can't use, but back then, anything goes. <laughs> so underneath that we've got the pit regulations where it says that each car is allocated only one replenishment pit so they could 
they make a pit stop as many times as they want, but if they want a refreshment, they can only do that once. Um, only three people are allowed to actually attend to the car to, you know, uh, refuel it or give the driver like a drink or something like that. But also crucially, they couldn't have any fuel, any spares or anything in that pit box, basically because the whole pit lane was actually on the racetrack itself and it could cause an accident, obviously. Onto the flag signals and for a red flag, it basically means a complete and immediate stop. So a little bit like go-karting rules that when you see a red flag, it means you need to stop where you are exactly rather than slow down and return to the pit. Uh, if you see a yellow wave flag, it means that there's great danger. Be prepared to stop. Uh, yellow motionless means take care, danger. Um, blue wave flags means another competitor is trying to overtake you. Uh, blue motionless means another competitor is following you very closely. Uh, yellow with a vertical red stripe, take care, oil has been spilt somewhere on the road. White means an ambulance uh, or a service car is on the circuit and black shown with a white number, signal for a car bearing that number to stop at your next pit lap. So basically you've been given a, a, a penalty. And obviously the black and white checker flag means signal for the end of the race. Then finally, onto the last section, which is about the judical, where you breach the rules and regulations, what your fine will be, which here is actually up to five pounds. So as we mentioned earlier, in, with inflation, it's 172 pounds or in dollars, 230. And that's for each offense that you cause. So it's not like a total amount, it's for each rule or regulation you break, that's how much you might be fined up to. Effectively, that's it. If you want to see all of the rules and regulations, because I have skimmed over some of them, you can go over to my Twitter where I've uploaded photos of the three pages so you can have a look yourself. And also, while you're there, give me a cheeky follow. But that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then make sure to click the like button down below. If you want to check out the 1950 British Grand Prix highlights I made, you can do so by clicking over there on the left-hand side. If you want to subscribe for some more motorsport content and also some live streams as well, then make sure to click subscribe down below there as well. But thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.